Hello, Mr. Wayne. Hi. Hi, my name is Nicole Reichrand. I'm a physician assistant with Wood CSUMB. Pleasure to meet you. I'm going to be conducting your neuro exam today. Is that okay with you? Yes. I'm just going to get a drape for your lap. Just make it a little bit more comfortable. And while I'm draping him, I am always observing my general appearance and status. I'm observing my patients that is awake, alert, and responsive. There are no apparent distress, that they're well-developed and well-nourished. And I can also note the dress, grooming, maybe some personal hygiene, odor of body breath, facial expressions, posture, or speech. If any of my vital signs were abnormal or they were not taken initially, then I would repeat those vital signs. To begin my neuro exam, I'm always gonna start with the mental status exam. We're gonna be looking and assessing the level of alertness, appropriateness of responses, and orientation. So, Mr. Lane, can you tell me your full name? Yeah, Morgan Lane. What is your date of birth? 04-22-1981. Do you know what the date is? Uh, today is the 27th. And what is the day of the week? Tuesday. Very good. And, <laughs> um, and what brings you in today? Um, I'm just having some general uh, leg pain. Okay, so we're gonna be assessing that today. Thank okay. you. So, first we're gonna be starting looking at the head. We're looking for the size, shape, any evidence of trauma or infection, especially noting the face for any asymmetry, involuntary movements, expression, or edema. We're gonna start doing our cranial nerve exam. We're gonna go one through 12. Now, whatever flow would be best for you, you can start with head, eyes, and work way down to the mouth and neck. So you're gonna kinda of get used to your flow, but for this video purposes, we're gonna go one through 12. So cranial nerve one is the olfactory nerve. We're gonna be checking for patency of the nose first, and then we'd use a smell, either a coffee or peppermint. Usually we wanna use two different ones. I'm gonna check one on each side. So Mr. Murray, would you mind occluding or pushing on the right side of your nose and sniffing it? And do it the same on the other side? And if my patient was um, complaining of any kind of loss of smell, then this is when you wanna definitely check the cranial nerve one. Um, but for our testing purposes, we'll just verbalize if my patient was having any complaints of loss of smell, that's when I would perform this exam. We always want to check again, patency on both sides. And you would hold it under, the coffee, toothpaste, whatever you have available, maybe an alcohol swab, whatever's easier for you. So cranial nerve two, we want to check visual acuity. We have a Rosenbaum chart outside, so we're gonna do that last on the cranial nerve two and have them stand 20 feet away. But I'm gonna check for um, using my ophthalmoscope. So make sure that you are gonna shut the lights off. And the light is working appropriately. Now we're gonna go with the very bright, large disc first. I'm gonna be looking into your left eye. I'd like you to look across the room and just fixate there. And you're gonna see a bright light coming in this side. Because I'm checking the left eye first, I'm using my left eye to examine that side. So. Do you wear contacts or glasses? No. So there's no refractory error that I need to accommodate for, and I don't have a refractory error, so I keep it at zero. Please review the refractory error video if you have any additional questions. So what I'm gonna do, using my left hand, we're gonna come at about a 15 degree angle. I'm using my right hand to kind of just open up the eyelid, because your immediate reaction is to kind of blink, so we wanna make sure we're holding it nice and open. We're gonna hold it open. I'm gonna come a little bit close to you, just keep continuing to look straight. So using my left eye, coming in at 15 degrees, you're gonna see a red reflex. And we're gonna get nice and close. Excellent. Good. So we're looking at the optic disc for clarity, if there's any kind of pallor. The uh, margins of the disc are nice and clear. And I'm looking for any kind of papilla edema, which is kind of any swelling of the optic disc itself. So the same thing, I'm looking at his right eye, so I'm using my right eye. And this is gonna kinda come across your back, you're gonna feel the wire. Using my left hand, I'm gonna hold up the eyebrow and eyelid. Coming in again, 15 degrees, seeing that red reflex. And coming in to find the optic disc. Excellent, thank you very much. Sorry if that bothered your eyes a little bit. Please don't forget to turn the lights back on after performing that exam. So now we're gonna be looking, um, we looked at the optic disc. Let's, would you mind coming with me that we're gonna check your visual acuity out in the hallway? Sure. Okay? I'll take your drape. And again, we make sure the gown is secure in the back. 
if you have to leave the room. And that's perfect. I'm going to have you stand right here. So this chart is 20 feet away. If I had my small smelling chart, I'm sorry, excuse me. This is a smelling chart, the small handheld Rosenbaum chart. I would hold it 14 inches from his nose. This is the smelling chart, so we're going to walk um, about 20 feet. So if you don't mind, if you can read the smallest line possible. And why don't we start right above the red line. D-E-F-P-O-T-E-C. So that's with both eyes open, so that's the O-U. Would you mind covering your right eye, please? So this is an O-S reading. Again, the smallest line possible. D-E-F-P-O-T-E-C. Could you read it backwards for me? C-E-T-O-P-F-E-D. Perfect. Would you mind covering up your left eye, which is the O-D measurement? And would you mind going as low as you can? D-E-F-P-O-T-E-C. Perfect. Thank you very much. We can head back into the room. So he is O-D's 2020, O-S 2020, O-U 2020. So for cranial nerve two, and this is also testing some of cranial nerve three, which is the ocular motor cranial nerve. I'm gonna have you again look across the room here. We're gonna look for a pupillary reaction. So I wanna do a direct response. So I'm looking at the eye I'm shining my light into, and I'm looking for proper constriction. And the same on the right side. Perfect. I'm also gonna look for a consensual response, meaning that when I shine it in the left eye, the right eye pupil will also constrict. So I usually put my hand kind of here to kind of restrict any kind of lighting going in the other side. So I'm shining it here and I'm watching the other side. And the same thing on this side. I'm shining it in the right and looking at the left, looking for that consensual response. Excellent. I would note the size, measuring the pupils in millimeters, the shape, symmetry, and reaction to light. Next, I'm going to check the movements of the eye, which is testing three, four, and six, the ocular motor, the um, abducens, and the, oh God, um, the trochlear, excuse me, there we go, it's coming, a lot of cranial nerves. So what we're going to do is a pattern of an H to check all the directions of movement. So if you mind looking at my finger, I'm going to be moving it around in a pattern if you can watch with both eyes. It's going to go up. I'm looking for fluid movement of the eyes. Excellent, I'm come together. I want you to look at my finger, and then I want to look at a far point on the wall. Look at my finger, a far point on the wall. Look at my finger. So what I'm looking is for pupil constriction when you're looking at the mirror object, so it's my finger, and that's testing for accommodation. And the last part is follow my finger, it's gonna to come towards your nose. And now we're looking for proper conversion. So both the medial rectus of both eyes is able to come in towards his nose. All right. And quickly, after your extracular movements, I want to inspect for nystagmus, which is that rapid oscillating movement. So what you're going to do is look at my finger, and I'm going to go quickly to one side and quickly to the other. It is normal to find two or three beats of nystagmus if in a horizontal gaze. If it is continuous over two or three beats, then we get a little more concerned about any kind of neurological issue. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna grab my cotton swab because we're gonna be testing um, for cranial nerve five, which is the trigeminal. Trigeminal comes in three divisions, one to the forehead, one to the upper cheek, and one down to the jaw. And before we move on to four, to continue with three, three is also the ocular motor responsible for the upper eyelid, keeping it open. So we're looking for ptosis, or ptosis, I really like to say it. So making sure there's no drooping of the upper eyelid when we're assessing the eyes. So when I'm looking at the trigeminal, I wanna test for sensation of those three divisions. So I'm gonna use a little cotton swab, or you can use your finger so we'll, we'll use my finger to test both sides. When I touch your face, would you mind letting me know when you touch, when, I, when you feel my touch, and then if it feels the same on the other side. Okay. Okay? Does it feel the same? Yes. Here? Yes. Does it feel the same? Yep. Here? Yep. 
Does it feel the same? Yes. Okay. I also want to test for dull versus sharp sensation. So with the Q-tip, you have a dull side and you have a little bit of sharper side. I kind of use the edge. If you want to make it even better, you can do a little bit of a point to really make it a, a sharp um, sensation. So we're making sure that we're touching all three and comparing bilaterally. So would you let me know if you're feeling sharp or dull? Okay. And keep your eyes closed, please. Now, if you push too hard on the dull side of a Q-tip, it can feel a little bit sharp. So if you want to use something with even less sensation, um, get something a little bit thicker. Um, usually have bigger Q-tips or like say the end of a pencil, of an eraser. This feels dull. dull. There you go. So we tested both sides. We compared bilaterally. For the trigeminal, we could also test for the corneal reflex bilaterally. We're not going to do that to our colleagues. So what you have them do is you look over to the right side of the wall, you use a cotton whisk, and then you touch the cornea, and they should have a blink. That's a normal corneal response. And we do the same on the other side, looking towards that wall, wall, and kind of just using a cotton whisk and touching the cornea, and then it should be a blink response, which is also for the trigeminal cranial nerve, okay? The trigeminal also has some motor innervation. So it innervates the masseter muscle and the temporalis muscle. So one is found kind of in the temple area, the other one's right in front of the ear here. So we're gonna clench your jaw, and I wanna touch both sides. Clench for me. Okay, relax. And one more time, clench. So I'm feeling for symmetry and contraction of both of these muscles on either side to make sure that motor innervation is well. Okay. All right. Next is the facial nerve which is the motor, the movement of the actual face. So I'm gonna have you do four things for me, if you don't mind. I'm gonna have you smile and show me your teeth. So we're looking for symmetry on both sides. I'm gonna have you raise your eyebrows and wrinkle your forehead. Excellent. I'm gonna have you puff your cheeks out. And I'm actually gonna put a gentle pressure. Don't let me push the air out. Excellent. Okay, that's perfect. And I want you to try to close your eyes really tight and don't let me open them. Excellent. So remember, keeping the eyelid open is cranial nerve three. Keeping the eyelid shut is cranial nerve seven, the facial nerve. Next, we're going to go to cranial nerve eight, which is the vestibular cochlear, which is responsible for hearing. I'm going to have you close your eyes. I'm going to wiggle my fingers from your ear. Let me know if you can hear it. Yes. Can you hear it on this side? Yes. Okay. When I wiggle it on this side, let me know when it stops. Like this side. Stop. Perfect. And that's just general hearing evaluation. You can open your eyes. If there was an abnormality, when we get to the ENT week, we're going to discuss what's called a Weber and Renee test. And that could check for what kind of hearing loss we do have if there was an abnormality, such as conductive hearing loss or sensorineural hearing loss. And we'll get into that in about two or three weeks. So the last, the other two are cranial nerve nine and 10, which is the glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerve. We're testing for swallowing, rise of the soft palate, and the gag reflex. We're assessing for difficulty swallowing and hoarseness. We'll go over the anatomy of why that is during our lecture. So what I'm gonna ask my patient to do, I'm gonna get a tongue depressor. Would you mind opening up and sticking your tongue out and saying, ah, that's good. Nice, like here, so I can look at the palate and say, ah, ah, perfect. So I'm looking for a symmetrical rise of the soft palate, looking for any kind of uvula deviation, and the phonation of him actually saying, ah, because it innervates the larynx. All right, throw that out. Now those two nerves also have a sensory aspect to it. They have a taste in the posterior one-third of the tongue. It does not have to be performed. Um, there are other autonomic innervations of the vagus nerve. So we're, this is, again, it's just testing the cranial nerves, but we can go into the anatomy of the vagus nerve also during lecture. So the last two are cranial nerve 11 and 12. Accessory nerve is 11. So I'm gonna have you do a shrug your shoulders. I'm gonna push down, don't let me. Excellent, relax your shoulders. 
and it also innervates the sternocaudal mastoid. So I'm going to put my hand on your face. I want you to push your face into my hand. I'm going to have you do more of a rotation. So you're going to be trying to turn your neck, and you're going to push into my hand. Excellent. This side too. Perfect. And that's testing on either side of the sternocaudal mastoid. So we're testing for symmetry, and we're testing for strength and contraction. All right, the last one is inspecting the tongue for symmetry, position, and movement, and that's specific to the hypoglossal cranial nerve. I want to look for any kind of atrophy, which is kind of muscle wasting or fasciculations, which is kind of this oscillating tremor. And we're looking for symmetry of movement and deviation. So sticking out your tongue for me. Uh, can you move it side to side? Perfect. So I don't see any deviation, no atrophy, and no fasciculations. So normal cranial nerve exam, 1 through 12. Make sure we got, and again, there are other ways that you can perform a cranial nerve exam. You can start with the eyes, uh, the head, the ears, the mouth, and the neck, kind of going from head to toe, just making sure that you're covering all the cranial nerves. This is more of a 1 through 12 example, um, but we'll get more practice.